Hiya. Welcome to LSB Feaster's radio channel and travel corner where we keep great radio from the past alive. Today, we are heading to New York in 102.7 WNEW New York. It's a tribute that WNEW did back in 1982 for Murray the K, Murray Kaufman, when he passed away back in 1982. Now, if you don't know much about Murray the K, he was huge in New York rock and roll radio in the 1950s, the 1960s, 1970s. And during the early days of Beatlemania, Murray often referred to himself as the fifth Beatle. Uh, Mary spent time on the air in New York at WMCA, WMGM, WORFM, WKTU, WNBC, but he was best loved for all the years he spent at WINS in New York. Murray also did a short run at 1050 Chum in Toronto. Did you know that? <laughs> uh, Murray was also remembered for the big rock and roll shows he used to host back in the day. Uh, WNEW put this tribute together featuring some of their legendary jocks like Scott Muni, Dennis Elsis, Pete Fornatal, Dave Herman, and others sharing their thoughts and memories of Murray the K. Hey, if you like what you hear, give it a thumbs up. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And when you do, smack that bell. And when you do, you'll be notified whenever we post anything new. Hey, a big thank you to our friend Rob Frankel who supplied this air check. It is 1982. Let's go back to the Murray the K tribute on 1027 WNEW FM, New York. If you grew up in the New York area in the 50s or the 60s, we invite you to uh, sit back and uh, remember some of the rock and roll radio. Remember Murray the K. If you didn't grow up in the in the city area in the 50s and the 60s, we invite you to lay back and, and have a history lesson. Find out why some of us are on the radio and why some of us got through high school, finished all that stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Scott Muni. I think probably uh, any one of our loyal and longtime listeners to NEWFM and those who are new listeners to NEWFM uh, should know about Murray the K because he's the type of guy that everybody says, hey, when I was growing up, I listened to Murray. I used to listen to him talk about submarine race watching, which is, of course, what people do when they park their cars and get together and get next to each other and say hello and kiss and then do sounds and communicate with each other and have fun with uh, records and discovering new people and all that. And Murray the K certainly was that. And I think that a station like any WFM should remember Murray now that he has gone, now that he had a lot of problems, about 10 years of fight with uh, cancer and not really being active on the air or anything, but people who remember growing up listening to single records and those 45s when they came in uh, grew up listening to people like Murray the K. And it's a good thing for all of us just to flash back a little bit and go back and say, hey, Rave, and me is Zuri, the key is A. And that's kind of what uh, this show should be about, to uh, let all of us remember what we remember as we listen to Murray the K. Or if you weren't uh, around and you were a little too young, you should know what was happening. And that's what we're going to do tonight, a tribute to Murray the K. This meeting of the Swing and Soiree is now in session. This is me as Surrey. Duncan Minaj, here's Ricky Nelson. The man that wouldn't let grow up. I used to play around with parts, hasten at my call. I was a fool. Poor little 
fool that is uh, Ricky Nelson. <laughs> All you spinner fans, be spears on it for you. No thing cause it's a shame. Time now, well, two and a half minutes to go before five o'clock. Right after news, we got a discotheque hour, and we're going to be moving and grooving and hoping that you're with us. Right here in naked New York. This is Murray the K. We'll come back, going to get ready to do a little dancing here. Dig the beeper coming on with the news. Murray Kaufman, standing news watch, and I have 72 winds degrees. New York, a really wet one. Or how wet? Or really wet. New York hasn't seen a July day like yesterday since the Weather Bureau began keeping its records in 1871. The Bureau reported that yesterday had more rain than any July day on its record. Cape Canaveral, submarine missile. The nuclear submarine George Washington fired its third straight Polaris missile while submerged off Cape Canaveral today. In the summer of 1981, Murray the K was here in New York and we were lucky enough to be able to have him talk on tape about himself. It was probably the last time he did that. I started in New York, which is kind of odd because you don't usually break into New York radio. Doing a show, which was started I think at 11 o'clock at night, went from 11 until 12, and then from 2 until 6 in the morning, and that was WMCA. And I started doing crazy things at that time. All those mystery bits uh, with the punchlines and things, I started that. What kind of a man is it that sits and waits for a girl for an hour and a half in a lonely, deserted house about 30 miles outside of town who is absolutely transfixed when she walks down the stairs in a beautiful white gown. And suddenly, absolutely hypnotized by her eyes, not noticing the, the knife in her hand, she raises the knife and with her, with each plunge of the knife into his body, she screams. <coughs> While his life's blood started to ebb away from him, he started to fall to the ground, still wondering, still doubting, still asking himself, Does she love me with all her heart? It's a lover's question I'd like to know. And I started doing crazy things at that time. I did my submarine race watching and I did uh, I used to run all these crazy contests and scavenger hunts and and things with cab drivers and, and the first girl that would show up at the studios wearing a bikini bathing suit when the temperature hit zero. I did, I did anything that was crazy, but I was such a rebel at that time. Oh, oh Danny boy, the pipes. Pipes. Eight minutes before one, my prayer, come out of it now. It's submarine race watching just a little bit at a time. Let's not rush into this whole thing. Tell you, the only thing I'd like you to rush to is your uh, writing desk, because I got another freebie for thee. And again, I'm going to tell you, like we did with submarine race watches and like we did with Mia Surrey and the Swingers Anonymous cards, don't get shut out, friends. We have a limited number of... Uh, complimentary booklets for some wonderful times for the balance of this summer. Three after one. Tell you what we'll do, girls. We'll make it a 20 after one when we'll start the poll, okay? Is that all right with you? Because we've got a lot of things we want to do in between. And I can't be bothered, Ed, with anything else in there, right? Right. Uh, Palisades Amusement Park is so easy to reach by public service buses no. from 100... You've been there. 167th Street and Broadway, orange and black bus from the Port Authority bus terminal. They have $3 million worth of new attractions and rides, and the games of chance are back. And I want to tell you that uh, you can go across the George Washington Bridge. It's a half a mile south of the bridge. You can go underneath the bridge. Why don't you try that? Could swim. We well, could swim. You can take a little kayak or paddle across in a canoe. Of course, if the tide is against you, why don't you pack a picnic lunch? Because you may end up in Bear Mountain, so the day wouldn't be a total loss. But Palisades, if you get over there, will be a ball, and we guarantee that you will have such a time. They got all kinds of strange things. They got a horror house there, and when you walk in, you hear.
nothing. Wind's time now is eight minutes after 12 o'clock, and that was Patricia. We're playing a lot of the oldies for you during this uh, next 15, 20 minutes. Then we switch over to the newies, then we get the regular hits, and then to the oldies again, and some of this and Scotty Waddy doo doo ring it ding ding ding. Hey, friends, we got a little sports uh, for you right now. I don't know what your favorite sport on Saturday night is, but I know a lot of folks like to go uh, uh, submarine race watching. I did anything that was crazy, but I was such a rebel at that time that and it just didn't work out. And so I had this deal over WINS from 11 p.m. until 6 a.m. You got the number? Mm. I got the time, baby. You got the money. I got time. Worth to 605, honey. What you waiting for? We're going into the Winds News Center. We're going to sashay in. The whole idea was to be entertaining on the air rather than playing a record and trying to get into how the record was number 27 with a bullet. They finally gave me a shot at doing the show from 7 until 11. It took one book. And I was number one. That's when I became Murray the King. That was in, in August of 1958. You're listening to a tribute to a missing DJ, Murray the King, at Eddie WFM. This is Rock and Roll Radio. Stay tuned for more rock and roll. Well, I think the thing people liked most about Murray was uh, he was always uh, playing games and having fun and doing chants and calls and was what you call the offbeat disc jockey. Hi, this is Dennis Elsis. Growing up in the early 60s in the New York area, rock and roll radio was an incredible treat. Uh, there was the old WMGM and then, of course, WMCA and WINS and WABC and they all doing battle. And at nighttime, well, you could listen to Scotso and BMR and Cousin Brucey and, of course, Murray the K. And I listened and I sent away from my submarine race watchers card and my Mia Surrey booklet and Murray's lists of golden gassers blasts from the past. And the very first rock and roll shows that I ever went to were Murray's all-star reviews at the Brooklyn Fox and the Brooklyn Paramount. And of course, when the Beatles came and, and Murray became the, the fifth Beatle, I was mesmerized by all the magic that, that he got to do with them. There is no doubt in my mind that I wound up doing what I do here at NEWFM because of people like Murray the K. We're from all parts of the world, from London, England, with from Brooklyn. And, uh, we've got some more sounds for you coming from England, coming back to the USA where she belongs after completing a very successful tour of the continent and uh, also knocking out the Beatles who uh, dug her or took her around and showed her all of London. May we give you that reach out for me, girl, Miss Dion Warwick. And I'll be. And I'll be. All right, right about now, what well, we got is some sounds for you, huh, baby? How's everything? What you have to understand is that um, a Murray the K all-star review at the Brooklyn Fox and the Brooklyn Paramount wasn't like uh, a disc jockey today hosting a show with one or two acts. These were like 10 or 11 or 12 groups. Uh, for example, I'm looking at a, a program, one of my own programs from December of 1962, right? And the lineup was Jackie Wilson, Joey D, the Shirelles, the Four Seasons, the Cookies, Mark Valentino, Sam and Dave, the Dovells, Mike Clifford, Bobby Sox and the Blue Jeans, the Ronettes, Little Eva, Lada Edmond, she was the lady that danced in the cage on Hullabaloo, the Earls, the Crests, Dionne Warwick, Johnny Thunder, and Reuben Phillips in the orchestra because there was one band that backed up all of the acts. Not everybody brought out their, all, you know, their own equipment. Most of these bands only sang, and, and Reuben Phillips in the orchestra, or whoever was the orchestra for the particular show, they would, uh, they would play for all the groups. So you have 12 or 13 groups, and they did eight or nine shows a day. Doors opened at 12 noon, and there was always a movie, obviously, to give them time to reset, some dreadful John Wayne cowboy movie or something. And the show... I don't know. We always got there first. We always got there at 12 noon. We were, we were on Christmas or Easter vacation, usually, when these shows were on. And um, 
the shows must have gone from from morning or midday well into the night and if you were lucky enough you could just sit there and see the shows over and over and over again they must have worked very hard lord knows how much they got paid and how much murray made on the whole thing but it was an incredible experience the old brooklyn fox and the brooklyn paramount theater i don't think either of those theaters um, exist anymore incidentally those of you from new york i guess would be interested i was interested in knowing that uh, the brooklyn fox theater is being turned torn down so that's the end of another era a lot of people ask me you know to go and do one more show there but i figured what the hell we that was my other life it was good and uh, i took the bread and ran and decided to get into my head We're sending this particular recording as a special, uh, as a special invitation to the Beatles, and uh, so why don't you right now, when I say when I say three, say hi Beatles. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, George, John, Paul, Ringo, that's for you, baby. You're what's happening? Okay, here's the Brooklyn Fox. Right now, may I give you Mr. Soul in 1964. The seven letters. Stand by me, man. Mr. Benny King. Right now, I know you're going to dig these boys because you've met them girls before up on the roof, fellas, under the boardwalk. I know you know the fantastic drifters. Let's hear it for them. All right, baby, right now, may I give you a gentleman who we had the pleasure of introducing in the very first show we ever did at the Brooklyn Fox Theater. And since that time, he has grown to be one of the most exciting performers of this or any other year. I give you the one and only Big Brother Chuck Jackson. Right about now, going to bring on that crew that does the Sloopy and the Watusi for you. Let's hear it right now for the vibration. Come on. For the very first time, for the very, very first time at the Brooklyn Fox Theater, I know you're gonna love them. Great big hand for the Danny Boy crew, Patty LaBelle and the Bluebell. Representing California now on our great big show, here they be, the Bell Shall Not Steal to his Dick and Dee Dee. And now, may we present that leader of the pack crew, here are the Shangri La. This is a special tribute for Murray the K, a member of our disc jockey association and a guy who gave us a lot of fun and a lot of games and a lot of good music and everything on radio. And we lost him quite recently. And tonight on NEWFM, we salute Murray the K. Well, the name of the show is the Swing and Soiree, you know. So I always figured that at that time, everybody was something. Like LaGuardia, I remember the mayor, he was the hat. And Sinatra was the voice. And then there was Stan the Man Musial. And I always felt, okay, I was going to be the K. Murray the K and the Swing and Soiree. And it sounded good. So I said, that's what I'll go with. And just like that, I became Murray the K. And it was like, that's the way I felt. You, you go with your first instincts. Because they're usually true. They're right. And they're either going to love you or they're going to hate you. But at least you're taking a shot. You're not being a nothing. You're either going to be loved, you're going to be hated. So I took a shot, and I, it turned out that people dug what I was doing. And it, and it was true that the, the kids did like me. I, I learned from my audience. My audience was the, was the greatest teacher in the world. And the more I would listen to the audience, the more chutzpah I would get. And the more guts I would have. And since a chutzpah makes a great surgeon, I figured, hey, that makes a great surgeon. You imagine the kind of a disc jockey I'd be? Steve Leeds is in the music industry and independent record promoter here in New York City. Before that, he fooled around with radio and got to work with Murray the K for quite a number of years. This past summer, Murray the K was here in New York City, and Steve took him out to dinner. People in the restaurant were obviously hip to the fact that this was Murray the K at that next table. And for him, it was a real rush because in L.A., where he's been living for the last couple of years in Studio City, nobody knows him from Adam. He could walk down the streets there and he's just 
not known. So here he's in this Spanish restaurant eating, and uh, people are like looking at him and giving him strange looks and saying, is that Murray the K? Is that Murray the K? And a couple of kids came over to him and said, hey, aren't you Murray the K? And he responded, yeah. And they said, wow, what have you been doing? And like, he really got off on it. He had this big smile on his face. It was like, wow. He said, Steve, this is where I belong, man. And he says, this, this is, I mean, this is New York. I know I'm home. And then later that evening, we went to the Savoy to see Kim Carnes. And he he really, Murray hasn't listened to much music in a while, obviously, because of his health and his lifestyle really prohibits it. And so he didn't know too much about Kim Carnes, but so he said, yeah, let's check this out, find out what it's all about. And uh, the, guard, the guard at the door, the ticket taker, and Murray's name wasn't even at the door. And the guy said, hey, man, all the times you did things for me, man, of course, you can come in here anytime you want. And so, like... Murray was like, wow, I'm in New York, you know? And he sat down at the table, and immediately people started coming up to him and recognizing him and talking to him, and immediately he made half a dozen new friends, people surrounding him at the tables, talking to him. And he, he, he was, got tired that evening. There was a little press reception afterwards at the Savoy, and he just got too tired, and he said, hey, see, I'm real tired. I want, I want to go. He said, but this is great. So powerful was Murray the K's influence as a radio programmer that he became known as the Fifth Beatles shortly after the British invasion hit the shores of the colonies. I wasn't looking to be after their shirt tails or I didn't want to hang on. You know, everybody said, I'm my self-appointed Fifth Beatle or my or I proclaimed myself to be this, that, or the other thing or I worked my way in. I mean, if the Beatles didn't want you, man, there wasn't a chance in the world that you could get within uh, five miles of them.